Aquarius, it's time for your weekly horoscope for the coming seven days. And just a quick reminder for everybody out there, if you ever want to get a session with me, you do need to go to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com. Or of course, you may also, of course, just follow the links down below. I've actually got a sale going on right now, 20% off all services, including gift certificates. And so uh, you can check that out as well when you want to. And your build a spread horoscopes, got a little hair here, um, you know, will be uh, coming out. I'm kind of doing sort of a, a bit of a tweak on that and when I want to have those come up. So I hope, uh, you know, just, just bear with me while I do that. So what is going on when it comes to this week for my Aries uh, brethren and sistren and, you know, my, my Aries crew? So this week, the spiritual theme is all about the nine of wands upright. This is the overlight. Remember, this is what's going on behind the scenes in everything that you have going on. And there is this very clear understanding of an assessment of uh, the fences, the boundaries that you have built and whether or not any of them need to be fixed or even just simply torn down. Because with the nine of wands upright, we are redrawing boundaries, but also paying attention to ones that may be are keeping things in our life that we want to let go, that we want to let out, and keeping things out of our life that we want to actually bring uh, closer to home, closer to heart. And so this is all about paying attention, I think, to not just necessarily uh, boundary boundaries, but themselves also being patterns, patterns of self-preservation, patterns of maybe uh, self-protection, how you hold your own space, how you hold your space for other people, how you're actually allowing that kind of um, flow to be dictated, and where is that something that is serving, or where is it something that maybe, yeah, it's kind of outlived its usefulness. We're going to be finding that out this week behind all areas of our life. And as we step in to the uh, material zone, we talk about uh, your work, your finances, we have the Knight of Pentacles upright, and it does look like um, I, I put a comrade in cause. Uh, so we might look at this as sort of like, uh, a, you know, an ally coming in, a friend, uh, somebody that you might consider to be deeply a part of, you know, even your own soul group, right? You know, uh, a, a deep I, I do sense a deep love, a deep affection that is sort of underlying all of the interactions you're having with this person. And like I said, I can't tell what the nature of this connection is. Um, it definitely is this person coming in to kind of lead you to a completely different way of going about providing your service to the world. And this could actually be maybe a breakthrough um, where they are taking you on um, a new path that could actually not only, of course, yield, uh, you know, more, more uh, material abundance, but this is almost like they are bringing you on to, I guess you could say, a, a, a road that you're already heading towards, a, a path that you're already on. And this can sometimes happen where we are, again, we, we are uh, comrades in this in this mission. We are uh, partners in this mission. We are brothers in this mission. We are sisters in this mission. And you are getting a chance to actually, maybe they're allowing you to uh, get on their horse or they're bringing a horse for you, but you're being born and carried towards a completely different uh, professional or material opportunity, whether this is within or, or without your current situation, of course, will vary. But you want to make sure that, again, you're not too focused on that self-preservation with the Nine of Wands to not hear them out. And with the Knight of Pentacles, here's the thing. This is bona fide. This is something that this person can actually show their work and show the fruits of their labor. This is not like some kind of hopeful, uh, you know, hard sell recruitment kind of deal. It, it's not anything like that. This is a sense of establishment, but it is heart-centered, which I'm really actually excited for for you. As we get on to your uh, community and your social life, friends and relatives uh, that you've already got around you uh, in close proximity, we've got the Five of Swords upright, and it does look like there is going to be a, a bit of a clash where I think that you yourself are uh, finding that maybe a, a conflict is brewing or a conflict is coming to a head when it comes to maybe a lot of sacrifices, limitations, or compromises 
um, have, have become too much for this particular friend, for this particular relative, for this particular social group. And the Five of Swords is indicating uh, that we are going to see where it's just not an equivalent exchange. We're not actually uh, getting out of this what we're putting into this. They're not matching that level of uh, emotional, spiritual, uh, or, or, you know, or affectionate uh, energy in, in quality or quantity. And with the Five of Swords, we may feel pretty hard done by that. Uh, but also at the same time, I feel as though they're not going to be able to go forward with you um, where you're going on this, you know, on, on your journey where you are. I think that maybe you could even be cutting somebody off where you've been kind of carrying them or holding space for them for far too long, maybe actually allowing them to kind of ride your coattails a little bit or maybe with wishful thinking, just sort of think, oh, well, maybe they'll get it. Maybe they'll click. Maybe this friend or this relative, whatever. You could even be breaking with an entire group or breaking with an entire community that you have grown out of a long time ago and you're really going for the real deal. You're really kind of like, no, I can already feel it. I can already feel that heart pull in a completely different direction. You know, these are my real, you know, uh, well, everyone is, right? And at the end of the day, everyone is connected. Everyone is related at the end of the day. But it's like, these are my strongest, I guess you could say, expressions that I want to work with right now, as opposed to maybe um, staying in this particular space. And which, which completely follows the line of what we saw with the incoming wave, where we were talking about, you know, getting away from uh, common denominators that have nothing to do with us and nothing to do with our journey right now. And stepping into a space where we're honoring ours and those with whom we actually have that 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 deep heart connection that does not need all of that kind of work put in. As we get on to your uh, challenge or your lesson that may present as a challenge, you've got the death card in reverse, which is uh, completely what we've been looking at this whole time. Where are things getting preserved that don't need to be preserved anymore? Are they preserved out of habit? Are they preserved out of... Um, Maybe, uh, you know, uh, are, are they preserved for another person? Are they maybe unconscious preservations? Are they, they things that we're holding up, but it's continuing to keep us in a bit of looping behavior? Are we maybe preserving something, hoping to get um, through it eventually? This is the question we have to ask ourselves because... There are some things that are maybe locking up your your progress, locking up your your love, your freedom, your your growth when it comes to whatever you are maybe trying to hold up. And I'm not sure if we're holding this up because it feels practical or it feels sensible. I'm not saying do anything reckless, but it does look like this is going to be something that has to come up for question. And this is happening, you know, a lot, it looks like for you this week. For your relationships with love and romance we have the three of pentacles in reverse and it does look like there is going to be a turn where we have to reconcile with either um a new person or an existing partner uh and and, and really reconcile really get this understood that we're trying to work on two completely different futures or maybe more than one future at a time that are competing for one another. And it's, it's really hurting our ability to sync up and work as a real team. And with the three of pentacles reversed, we always see teamwork issues. We always see um, possibly, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm in a situation where I'm helping this person build their idea of paradise and their idea of a happy home. But you know, mine's over here and, you know, I deserve it too, or vice versa. You may be noticing that a partner is kind of going out of their way to do everything for you, but it seems almost like they don't really know what they want. So they're just kind of doing that by default. And we have to get this back into a place of, you know, coherent authenticity this week. You may be even noticing this with new people where it almost feels as though we are, um, having to reevaluate a little bit about what everyone is bringing to the table. I don't see this as necessarily having to go in a negative direction, but with the three of pentacles reversed, 
we have to also pay attention to the fact that we're fighting over timelines. We are competing over timelines. There is a rivalry going on. And however we choose to make peace with this or end the rivalry or end the conflict, the sooner that challenge is over and hurdled, the better it is for all concerned. Okay? So I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because you all know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session with me, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com or, you know, again, follow the links down below.